Your life experience, good or bad, is a gift when you share it with others. At Taxi Chronicles, we allow real riders with real stories to share their gift. So hopefully this episode will intrigue, enhance or inspire you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode, another rider. Today we are going to learn about a lady's experience of her loved ones and uh, mental health and the state of the healthcare today. So nice to have you here today, Sally. Oh, thank you, thank you. So tell us your experience with your son. Um, so my son was very excited going off to university for the first time and he seemed to be having a really good time and um, partying and I knew that perhaps he might have been dabbling with um, some lots of drinking and perhaps some drugs and it transpired he was and then I noticed subtle changes he looked very tired he looked very pale and um he I suggested that he come home and he was coming home on the Saturday morning and I I had a call and I thought perhaps he'd lost his card or his pin and he was in an ambulance he had he'd walked into um jaw carriageway and tried to to kill himself and he was in a psychotic episode um so he was sectioned he was taken to hospital and he was sectioned under the mental health act and um, my husband and i were quite grateful because he was safe and it was clear that he wasn't well unfortunately well fortunately he was in brighton the care that he received was outstanding and he was transferred to london because it's all about funding which trust that you're with and um, he was placed in a, a mental health unit in um, Park Royal. And from the moment we arrived, it was negative, but I thought perhaps because of COVID and it's quite stressful. Um, but unfortunately, it was the beginning of a month-long nightmare, um, literal nightmare. Um, the only positive for that was that Joseph, because he was so... <clears throat> medicated he wasn't really aware of reality um and we not only had to deal with the fact that joseph was very unwell but we had to also deal with the the professionals who just seemed to block everything and there was no interactions you couldn't speak to a doctor um he wasn't given the right information we just constantly had to battle we've had no trust in them whatsoever so any time we would communicate, we were we were we were breaking the rules, according to this country's GDPR, in that we were recording for evidence. We were making sure that there was clear understanding. We were trying not to challenging challenge decisions because we we're frightened that that might be detrimental to Joseph's ongoing care. Um, and as time went on, we realised that he was getting worse. Um, and he was actually put in seclusion and he was there for a week, which is a cell, basically. Um, and then when they when they allowed him back into general population... Now, bearing in mind, this isn't the prison system. This is mental health, where young people, older people, people that are challenged by mental health problems have their rights removed to protect them and placed in in care where they're supposed to be protected and it doesn't always happen like that and in our case it certainly didn't happen joseph was assaulted twice the police were called he had his stuff stolen he like i said was medicated um we had to literally challenge everything in the nicest way to keep them on board um to just try and get him to a place where he was lucid enough that we could talk to them about having him home which eventually happened initially for 48 hours and then the mental health team would the transition was that they would come round every day that again didn't happen and that's fine because he had his mum and dad around him um the young people out there that don't have anyone and our experience of the ward was it's full of <coughs> young men I'd say 95% young black men um interacting with the staff who were overworked and 
possibly underpaid. The, these young men, they come, they get medicated, they get stabilised and then they're released back out there. Um, on the leaflets it's all shiny and it says that they have art therapy and they have this therapy. They don't and, and some of them stay there long term because they're homeless. And it's just, it, it's abhorrent what's happening. These young men have been written off. Mm. They will just stay on, in, on the books, getting their repeat prescriptions. And the only time somebody will bother with them is if they don't pick up the tablets or they don't, or they come across the police and then it's a whole nother lot of problems. So it's actually really quite frightening. What would you do to improve and are these come is this a private company it's a private company you look after yeah okay. it's a massive private company mm -hmm. and you cannot complain outside of the unit because if you go to head office so to speak it's like a financial institution you're referred back to the place that you're complaining about mm -hmm. um and if you if you look at them in depth, if you try and find a policy regarding seclusion, if you try and find something as basic as a COVID policy, everything is hidden. You could I found out lots of information, but it probably took about nine hours to get it because it's so carefully hidden. And because of the new rules that are there to protect lots of people, it enables them to be even more or even less transparent, should I say. Do you want to name this company or? Um, C W N L. Oh, okay. Mm. What would you do to improve the situation? Um, <clears throat> I believe that actually challenging decisions that are going on, independent reviews, pe dropping in on these units, but I, I actually believe that the. The starting point is education, and that that starts uh, as hard as it is to say at, at five, and making these young people aware of their mental health and knowing themselves, and and giving them the tools so that they can deal with challenges as they grow and go to high school, mm -hmm. and engaging a whole community of people to be on board with these young people mm -hmm. and be their be their friends, be their peers, be their heroes. Mm -hmm. You know, all these young girls and boys that are at high school, go back to your, your primary school. Go back and engage with these young people. Tell your story. Tell it honestly about when you got into trouble, how it happened, the good things that you did, because that's how we're all going to learn and move forward. Mm, okay. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Coming from somebody whose mother has... Uh, mental health issues and has been for all of my life I I believe to really tackle it and it's not to d dismiss the people who have issues now but it's to have better social programs f from schools mm -hmm. explaining about the issues that people have in life Absolutely. and that you don't have to just give up and fold um, and dealing with things like that the real life issues from relationships from job losses from yep. death and all of those kind of things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you said you're going to go into the industry yourself. Yep. So as a result of our experience as a family, I um, I looked into a career change of going into mental health and the system, and it's not that easy to to get it get into. It's actually a really valued valued profession, although it didn't come across that way in our experience, but. I'm going to go to university and I'm going to study um, mental health, adolescent and young people's mental health. Um, so in three years time, um, I will be, I will have a degree in my hands and I'll be able to knock on some doors, get a job and go into these places and actually make a difference and be able to, you know, one person's not going to change it, but actually have a voice to say, well, not necessarily that's not the way to do it because that can be quite negative but let's try this because I've worked with young children up to the age of 11 I've probably seen things that they would benefit from and they can teach me something and perhaps I could you know if everybody crossed over all this multi-agency approach on a real honest level then you know that might be a starting point 
Well, thanks a lot for that, and we wish you well. Thank and we you. hope everything works out with your son. Thank you, Simon. We hope you like that Taxi Chronicles interview. Don't forget to share and subscribe to get the latest episode. Ever considered investing in a continent with the fastest growing economies and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources. Listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you hear real investors with real stories from around the world share their experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am British Standard Time.